What's up everybody, this is Maddie Mo, and today we're talking about the top five tech from CES 2015, along with a few emerging trends that I noticed. Because I'm still a small YouTube channel, I wasn't actually at CES 2015, but of course I was watching every single tech blog and tech YouTuber out there who was there and taking in all the amazing things that happened. So here's my top five list and we'll start with number five. So the fifth coolest thing that I noticed at CS 2015 was the Dell XPS 13 inch laptop. So here's the thing, I don't usually get too excited by PC laptops since most of them kind of suck when it comes to the design department. But Dell has put something out that looks absolutely amazing. It's a new XPS 13 inch laptop and they're calling it the smallest 13 inch laptop on the planet. Now the main reason why it made its way into the top five is because of the display. It's a 13.3 inch edge to edge display, which Dell is calling an infinity display. It's made by Sharp, it's QHD with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. And it also happens to be a touchscreen. To put this into perspective, it's 23% smaller than the MacBook Air equivalent. Now other features include Intel's new Broadwell U CPU, SSD drive, a battery life up to 15 hours, which is really amazing. The XPS will start at 800 US for the i3 non-touch screen model and can run you all the way up to $1,600 if you want it fully loaded with an i7 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a touch screen. Number four is a smartwatch. It's not a full-fledged smartwatch. It's actually a really simple activity tracker, but it was designed extremely well. First, it looks really good. It's a watch you'll probably wanna wear every day and not feel like you're wearing some big slab on the bottom of your wrist. It tracks when you run, walk, or swim, and it does it automatically. It also has a sleep mode, which detects when you're actually sleeping. You don't have to set anything up, it just knows when you actually go to sleep. It'll monitor your cycle, record everything, and you can look at it all on your smartphone. But the coolest thing about this watch is the battery life. It can last up to eight months, that's insane. Like getting even a day for most Android Wear smartwatches is like the norm. The Pebble can last up to five to seven days, but eight months on a smartwatch is really, really cool. The, the thing is you don't even need to charge it, you just gotta replace the battery. It uses a regular CR2025 button cell battery which you can buy at any store, and you'll have no problems replacing it when it dies. You don't have to set everything up all again, everything will be remembered and you just reconnect it to your smartphone and take off from where you left off. So other features include the ability to detect time zones and adjust accordingly. So if you enter a new country, as long as your smartphone changes, your, your watch will update as well. You can sync up with your smartphone so that you can see your activity stats whenever you want. It's also water resistant up to 100 feet. And currently it only works with the iPhone, but Android is gonna get support in the next few months. Third up on the list is the LG G Flex 2. There was pretty much no mobile announcements this year at CES except for the G Flex 2. Most mobile companies seem to hold separate press events for new releases or wait until the Mobile World Congress, which is happening in March. But the Flex 2 actually looks really good, especially when you compare it to the original LG G Flex. The original G Flex was bulky, had a terrible screen and poor battery life. But the Flex 2 has completely changed all that. It also has some cool features like the ability to self heal within seconds of being scratched, which is really convenient if you have like keys in your pocket or if you have coins in your purse. If it gets scratched within seconds, it will start self healing. And this was demonstrated over and over again at CES. The phone is extremely durable. It can be bent back and forth without damaging the phone whatsoever. Even Lewis from Unbox Therapy, the original person who bent the iPhone not too long ago, took a crack at it was unsuccessful. So the specs include a Snapdragon 810 64-bit processor, two or three gigabytes of RAM, depending if you get the 16 gigabyte model or the 32 gigabit version, a 5.5 inch 1080p full HP OLED screen. So it's gonna have those nice, deep, beautiful blacks. It's gonna have a 3000 milliamp battery with fast charging. So basically if you plug it in, within 40 minutes, you'll have 50% of your battery life back. Comes with a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with OIS, auto laser focus, and dual LED flash. I think it's the exact same camera as the LG G3. So if you have that phone, or if you've used that phone, you'll be pretty familiar with the rear facing camera. It also has a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera and it's gonna be running Android 5.0.1 Lollipop. Now the phone is expected to come out in the next couple of months. AT&T has announced that they're gonna be carrying the phone People are guessing that the price of the phone is going to be around 600 US. 
So far, there hasn't been any word on whether or not it's coming to Canada. Second on the list is the Z Board 2 and not the Z Board 1. And the reason being is the Z Board 2 is what the Z Board 1 should have been. Now, it's much lighter, faster, easier to carry, and you can charge it within 90 minutes compared to the five hours it took the original one. The Z Board weighs between 16 and 18 pounds, depending if you go for the blue or the pearl version. It has top speeds of 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers, which is actually pretty fast. It can last up to 16 to 20 miles. It makes it pretty convenient if you just want to head over to a buddy's house, you can let the board charge for a little while, and before you leave, you're ready to go. The new design allows the board to be easily carried as there are handles on both sides of the board, making it extremely convenient for left handed people. It also has LED lights in front of the board to show how much battery life is left by changing colors. And there's also lights on the bottom front and the bottom back for nighttime vision. Now the Z Board 2 will be ready in July 2015 and retail for 1200 USD for the blue edition. Now if you want the more expensive edition, which is the pearl edition, it's going to run you $1400. So finally, the number one top tag that I saw at CES 2015 this year was car technology, or more specifically BMW's i3. It was awesome to see car manufacturers stepping up their tech game. This year, BMW impressed a lot of people with their new anti-collision. Doesn't matter how fast you're driving or if you're pressing the gas harder before hitting an object. The car will detect the object and automatically stop before hitting it. If that wasn't cool enough, you can actually summon the car with your smartwatch and it will drive to your location all by itself. With no one inside the car, it just does it. This type of tech seems like it should be years away, but honestly with Google's self-driving cars and now BMW's i3, it looks like it can only be like three to five years away before we might actually see this on the roads. So before I wrap this up, I just wanna mention a few emerging trends that I noticed at CES 2015. So the first one is that tech is completely killing cable. So Dish Network announced Sling TV, which offers a la carte options such as ESPN and TBS. Now, you wouldn't expect Dish TV to negotiate a deal like this. You'd expect something like Apple to do this. So this is a big deal, as a lot of people didn't want to cancel their cable and lose ESPN. So I, I foresee a lot more people this year cutting the cord. The second thing I noticed that is that everything has to be connected, from toothbrushes, belts, underwear, you name it. It seems like Internet of Things is making a big stance this year, and all your devices are just going to be syncing up with each other. The third thing I noticed is that tech is more important in your car than the actual engine under your hood. A lot more people are putting an emphasis on the actual tech that's put into the car, along with the car being electric or having fantastic mileage or gas efficiency. And finally, tech is invading the fitness and health industry. We saw a little bit of a push last year, but we're seeing a bigger push this year. There's a lot of boosts on the CES floor from the videos I've been watching that have a lot of fitness and health industry related wearables and devices that correspond to that. So that's my top five tech and emerging trends from CES. 2015 this year. If there's anything else that I forgot or you thought was really, really cool, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please feel free to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.